three, two, one, let's go. Hello, my beautiful channel family. Today is February the 6th, and this is Adam with the Watchman Adam YouTube channel here with the Israel News Update. Now, if you're new to our channel, I want to say welcome to our channel. And just know, on this channel, we know we're living in the end times. And we're watching for the intimate return of Jesus. That trumpet is about to sound. And we're going to be ready to go on this channel. This is the time of the end. This I know. For my Bible tells me so. That trumpet is about to blow. And when it does, you already know. Let's go. Okay, family, I pray you're all doing well today. I love you. And on Mondays, we do our Israel News Update. And we take a look at seven end-time headlines coming out of the land of modern-day Israel. Now, Israel is the Most High God's prophetic timepiece. And so many end-time prophecies in our Bible concerns the land of modern-day Israel. So as we see Israel being prepared for the time of Jacob's trouble, and it is, the tribulation is setting its shadow on the earth. It's very important to have a grasp of events inside of Israel. So family, without further delay, let's get into our Israel news update in three, two, one, let's go. The first headline of the week comes from the New York Times on February 6th, and this end time headline reads, Magnitude 7.8 earthquake strikes Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, and Israel. Okay, family, this is an intense situation. So early on Monday morning, a massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake rattled Turkey. And it's being reported that the earthquake can be felt all the way in Israel. Now, this was one of the stronger earthquakes in recent memory, and it's been followed by intense aftershocks. One of the aftershocks was a 7.5 magnitude. Now, while the earthquake epicenter was not located in Israel, hundreds of Israelis reported feeling this massive earthquake. And Israel has said that they're going to help Turkey in the recovery effort to find survivors. Family, this world is shaken, declaring the return of Jesus. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Let's remember to pray for the victims of this earthquake. Now the headline two, which comes from the Jewish press on February 5th, and this headline reads, Netanyahu rejects King Abdullah's demand for more Temple Mount WAQF officials. Okay, family, I have more Temple Mount news. So Benjamin Netanyahu recently met with King Abdullah II from Jordan. And the Jordanian king, man, he made a straightforward request. In light of recent events at the Temple Mount, the King of Jordan requested that more WAQF officials be assigned to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem to help maintain the status quo at the Temple Mount. Now, the WAQF is in control of Temple Mount assets and is an Islamic organization that is simpler to the Western concept of endowment. Now, in regards to the request made by King Abdullah, Benjamin Netanyahu straightforward denied the request and said no, a move that the Jordanian king is not happy about at all. Now, here recently, we've been seeing Jordan flex their muscle about the custodianship at the Temple Mount. Now, the headline number three. Okay, my beautiful family, the third headline comes from the Times of Israel on February 1st, and this end time headline reads, Netanyahu and Macron will meet to focus on Iran, expanding Abraham Accords. So Benjamin Netanyahu traveled to Paris to meet with French President and World Economic Forum member Emmanuel Macron. Now, this was their first meeting since 2020, and they discussed a wide variety of topics, which included the Abraham Accords and the situation with Iran. But the main topic they discussed was the ongoing threat posed to Israel by the Islamic regime in Iran. 
and the two leaders vowed to work together to try and peaceably solve the Iran problem. Now, as you may know, Emmanuel Macron is on a lot of people's Antichrist watch list, but we're not watching for the Antichrist. We're watching for the return of Jesus. Now to the fourth headline, which comes from World Israel News on February 1st, and this end time headline reads, Chad the Open Embassy in Israel, Masai played central role. Okay, so it was recently announced that the African nation of Chad, which is an Islamic nation, has opened an embassy in Israel, and the embassy is located in Tel Aviv, and this move comes five years after Chad renewed ties with Israel. And Israel hosted a delegation from Chad that attended an opening ceremony for the embassy on Thursday. And the leader of Chad had this to say about the embassy. This is a move that will strengthen the growing ties between Chad and Israel and is a step in the right direction. So family, now you can add Chad to the list of countries that have an embassy in Israel. You know, a lot of countries avoid putting their embassy in Jerusalem because that will be seen as recognizing Jerusalem as the sovereign capital of Israel. Rolling along the headline five, which comes from the Jerusalem Post on February 6th, and this end time headline reads, Winter Storm Barbara expected to wreak havoc across Israel. Okay, family, so a winter storm is about to lay the smack down on Israel. So Winter Storm Barbara is expected to make an impact in Israel today and is expected to bring wind gusts between 70 and 100 miles per hour with heavy rainfall and very cold temps. And what concerns them the most is the fear of flooding in the Judean desert. Now by early Monday afternoon, heavy fogs and winds had set up at the top of Mount Hermon, accompanied by heavy snowfall. Now let's remember to keep the people affected by this winter storm and our prayers as well. Now family, I don't know about you, but me, myself, I absolutely love it when it snows. But here in South Carolina, we don't really get much snow. What about you guys? Have you ever seen any snow? Let me know in the comment section below. Okay, headline number six comes from the Times of Israel on February 3rd at 6.49 a.m. And this end time headline reads, In now annual tradition, U.S. urges Israel to keep friction in check ahead of Ramadan. Okay, so the Biden administration once again fears the holiday season will lead to an uptick in tensions, especially in Jerusalem. Now, this year, Ramadan and Passover will coincide with one another. So senior U.S. officials used their visits to Israel over the last two weeks to urge Israel to take the preemptive steps in the upcoming weeks to ensure the sensitive period will come and go peacefully as possible. Now, Ramadan will begin on March 22nd and Passover on April 6th. I can tell you from my time in the army, Muslims take Ramadan very, very seriously. And family in the past, Ramadan has led to some major tensions. Like I said, Passover and Ramadan will coincide this year. During this time, keep your eyes on the Temple Mount. If they attempt the Passover sacrifice at the Temple Mount this year, I'm going to tell you, it will ignite the region. They will not react well at all to that going on during Ramadan. Alrighty, my beautiful channel family. Now to the seventh and final Israel news update headline for the week. In three, two, one, let's go. The seventh and final headline of the week comes from the Jerusalem Post on February 6th. And this end time headline reads, at least five Palestinians, K-I-L-L-E-D, in Israeli raid near Jericho. So it's been reported on Monday morning, the IDF conducted a raid on a refugee camp near the West Bank. And it's been reported that the raid was targeted at members of the group Hamas. And this raid was in response to an attempted assault that took place near Jericho last month. And during this raid, the IDF eliminated five Palestinian Hamas associates. 
Now here recently, the IDF has been ramping up the offensive over recent months as Israel is cracking down hard on radical groups. Family tensions all across Israel continue to rise at a level like I've never seen before as Israel is being prepared for the time of Jacob's trouble. Family, keep looking up. Alrighty, my beautiful channel family, that's the Israel News Update for the week of Monday, February 6th, 2023. I want to thank you all for watching, as I put a lot of time and work into these update videos, so you guys watching them, man, it truly means the world to me. Thank you. And remember, we do our Israel News Update on Mondays, and on Friday we do our End Time News Update, and once again, I just want to say thank you for watching. So if you just look around this world we live in, guys, it is screaming the intimate return of Jesus. Everything that Jesus said would be happening prior to his return, it's all going down in our generation. It's all converging in our generation, the fig tree generation, the generation that shall not pass away. And my beautiful family, that's why the message of the gospel is so important in these end times. And as always, let's close this video out by me giving you the gospel of our salvation. Now, one thing we've seen a lot of at these end times is man's coming along and they're twisting the gospel. And for some reason, they want to add words to it. And guys, it just don't work that way. No pun intended. So, according to scripture found in our Bible, Jesus was born of a virgin and he lived a sinless, perfect life. He lived his entire 33 years without ever once sinning. That's why he was the perfect sacrifice for the remission of our sin debt. And when Jesus was only 30, he began his earthly ministry. And in three years, he changed this entire world forever. And family, he did. Because here we are, nearly 2,000 years later, still singing praises to our Jesus. And when Jesus was 33, and the biggest act of love that humanity has ever seen or will ever see, Jesus was nailed on that cross. He had a crown of thorns shoved upon his head. Jesus was beaten in front of his mother. Jesus spilled his perfect, innocent blood for remission of our sins, my sins, your sins, Netanyahu's sins, everybody's sins. Family, Jesus did it all on the cross. And then Jesus laid dead for how long, family? For three days, three days, three days. At that third day, he busted that tomb wide open. Hey, guys, no tomb could hold our Messiah. Then Jesus ascended to go be with the Father. And on this channel and many other channels, we do know he's coming back for us soon. And family, what is it we're looking for? It's that Titus 2.13 blessed hope. And world events and Bible prophecy is declaring the soon and intimate return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Family, you stay in that full armor of God and keep on looking up. Because I promise you, our redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming soon. Family, let's go. Well, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget, give this video a big thumbs up and feel free to share it. Family, it helps me out so much, and I truly do appreciate it. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and join our channel, family. Because on this channel, you guys are more than a number. You guys are loved and appreciated, and I do pray for you guys on a daily basis. And speaking of prayer, if you have any prayer requests whatsoever, drop them in the comment section below. And myself and someone from the prayer team, man, we would be honored to pray over your prayer requests because there is truly power in our prayer. And if you don't have a Bible and you need a free King James Version Bible, email me at emailwatchmanadam at gmail.com and we'll get a free Bible to you. I believe everybody that wants a free copy of God's Word should be able to get a free copy of God's Word. Amen. Please include a shipping address. And family, give us a little bit of time to get back to you. I get around 50 emails a day, so it's hard to answer them all. But family, when I see your email, I will get your Bible out to you. I promise. Also, if you want to contribute to either the Bible ministry or our homeless outreach, we need all the help we can get. You can do so. Check the description box below. There's ways you can help us on the mission. 
all contributions, either to go to our homeless outreach or to the Bible ministry. Family, as always, please pray about it first. We're going to be hitting the streets again this weekend, passing out hope badge to the homeless. So as always, family, your prayers will be appreciated. We can truly feel your prayers when we're out there on the streets. I really do appreciate it. Before we close this video out, let's say a quick prayer together. Father God, thank you. I come to you in your son Jesus' name. I want to thank you for this beautiful channel family you've given us. Father God, continue to light our paths, and we're praying a hedge of protection on everyone watching this video. In your precious son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, family, to next time, your brother Watchman Adam signing out in three, two, one. I love you and keep on looking up. Bye.